some people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Welcome to the Think It's All Over Now. If you were expecting to see Michael Owen on the show this week, I'm afraid he's had to pull out due to a prior commitment. Wednesday is his night for Cubs. <laughs> but we've got an excellent lineup for you instead. David's right hand man this week is the new presenter of Film 99, who's always loved sitting alone in a darkened cinema in the middle of the afternoon. And these days, it's his notebook he whips out. <laughs> Jonathan Ross. David's other guest is currently Britain's top Formula One driver, despite operating under Ferrari team orders, which frequently say he's not allowed to win. So, to make him feel at home, we put him on David's team. <laughs> with Gary and Rory is a man who started out as an apprentice footballer with Brentford Reserves, and then went on to present Only Joking and Wheel of Fortune. So, it was all downhill after Brentford. <laughs> Bradley Walsh. We start the show by asking the teams to tell us the unconvincing excuses given for unconvincing performances. Gary, Rory and Bradley, we take you back to the game that sealed England's qualification for the last World Cup, when they achieved a memorable 0-0 draw in Italy. Now, England might even have won the match had Ian Wright tucked away this late chance. Ian Wright on the chase with Cannavaro, and he's got behind him, Peruzzi out, the angle is tight, oh, and he's hit the post! According to the official England faith healer, Eileen Drury, why did Wrighty miss a chance he would normally have put away? Gary's team. Uh, because he was Andy Cole in the previous line. <laughs> 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 she uh, deliberately willed the ball to hit the post uh, so as to deflect his embarrassment from having a very small knob. <laughs> What grounds did you say that then, Bradley? I don't know. I've got nothing else to say, quite frankly. I thought a knob joke at this juncture in the program was going to have the game. <laughs> now you know what I got stacked from the Wheel of Fortune. Is this something to do with reincarnation? Mm, no, that's a tin of milk, you dick. <laughs> He's slightly raising, raising the tone now, and he's gone from knob to dick. <laughs> I'm not saying it because I'm not into knobs. You're not into knobs? No, I'm just saying. Because your car's automatic. You know when you go and run that track really fast? Do you have a map or do you just keep following the others? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm to find my own way. Oh, oh, yeah. Do you ever just get in the car and think, oh shit, I need petrol? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, brother, you were quite close with your. Um, I think it. Didn't she say something like, um, <laughs> she said that she willed it not to go in to stop any crowd trouble of riot or something? Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll give you three points for that. The answer is that Eileen reckons she stopped Wrighty scoring using her amazing magic powers. She said she simply envisaged a pane of glass across the goal, and that stopped the ball going in. In an interview to publicise her autobiography, Why Me?, she went on, I thought there would be a riot if England won, so I prayed that they wouldn't score. Ian kicked the ball and it hit the crossbar. I got told off by God for that. <laughs> Crossbar post, it's very nearly the same thing, like medium and mental case. <laughs> Eileen Drury claims to have helped many members of the England squad and to have acted as a spirit guide for Gaza. He now knows exactly how to make a Harvey Wallbanger. <laughs> Eileen Drury used to run a pub, the Firkin Fruitcake. <laughs> and the pub was called the Red Lion. David, Jonathan and Eddie, it's FA Cup controversy for you. When a Sheffield United player was injured in the fifth round at Arsenal, the ball was kicked out of play so he could be treated. Arsenal's Ray Parler then sportingly threw the ball back towards the United goalie when this happened. Lee Morris off the field, Ray Parler concedes possession, or does he? This is Kanu and Obermars, and Arsenal have scored, and Sheffield United protest in unison. Alan Kelly off his line. Now, what does the referee do now? So, what we want to know is what was Obermars' excuse for breaking football's unwritten law and sticking the ball cynically into the back of the net? He's, he's Dutch, isn't he? Yep. See, whenever a Dutchman is the word possession, he runs as fast as he can and gets away with it, throws away whatever he's carried. In <laughs> <laughs> break. But you know, sometimes if you've got a ball, yeah. you don't want to let go of it, do you? 
I had uh, once I um <laughs> I had a problem once because I've got a I've got a Worcester combi boiler right at the top of the house right and one Christmas it overheated and I didn't know you know what to do and I knew there was an overheat button and I just come out of the bath and I was wearing a robe and I bent over to do it and of course when you get the 35 yard you know your balls go down like skydivers they're boom they're down by my knees so I'm bending down <laughs> trying to find the overheat button and we had a kitten and of course the kitten see <laughs> So next thing you know, I'm running around the house and I've got, an, you know, I've got a kitten hanging off me one hand. <laughs> and I lost about two pints. <laughs> and I was going to smack it, but I looked down, it's a little kitten, it looked so cute, I didn't have the heart. Yeah. And anyway, that's what you bought the kitten for, presumably. <laughs> <laughs> Just to say, when you're holding on to the ball, sometimes you don't want to let go. That's <laughs> all. Come on, Alfie. Any ideas? I would say, um, fellow sportsman, any chance to score, got to go for it. Is that right, Eddie? Yeah. <laughs> Come past. You never know when, you're, you know when your career's over, your scoring potential's going to go down for sure, so you've got to score You've got to take you every can. chance you can. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. You know, it's not quality, it's quantity, isn't it? That's an interesting <laughs> idea. <laughs> No, it's, it's just, it's, it's, the, it's the gentlemanly thing to, you know, to bang the ball into the crowd. David's meant to be a gentleman, but he never used to do that. But, <laughs> <laughs> he starts, was he it starts the fact, was it fact that they were sort of over, overseas players that they were supposed not to know the convention? No, with? no, that wasn't his excuse. No. It was, um, he was just excited and caught up in the moment and he was listening to Robbie Williams on his Walkman and he just kept coming away. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you three points for that. The answer is that Mark Overmars claimed his goal was purely a reflex action. But does that really hold up? We asked a consultant neurologist. <laughs> a neurologist, a reflex is a sudden, short-lived affair. Perhaps I can demonstrate. This is a tendon reflex. Mark Overmars, on the other hand, ran 40 yards down the length of the pitch. <laughs> to describe this as a reflex is extraordinary indeed. When uh, Nwankwo Kanyu arrived in England, <laughs> the whole of the Arsenal squad <laughs> met him at the airport to give him a traditional hybrid welcome. Lee Dixon shook his hand, and Martin Keown took him for a drink, while the rest of the squad nicked his luggage. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points, and Gary's team have three points. <laughs> in this next round, we play an unusual piece of sporting footage and ask the time-honoured question, what's going on? Gary's team, it's Eddie's stablemate Michael Schumacher for you, but what is he up to here? Und das ist natürlich die Bilder, auf die die Kollegen gewartet haben vom Fernsehen, tolle Presse. Fertig, los! So, Gary's team. Oh, I like that. What was going on there? Schumacher. Was that you, um, was that you, Eddie, behind him, as usual? No, I must be a little bit in there. What's he like? I'm a Schumacher. He's an arsehole, that guy. Yeah, I know he is. <laughs> Well, what about Schumacher? What's he like? Is he? He's, he's German, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you always have to come second to Michael Schumacher. I mean, if you pull a bird in a discotheque. Oh, I always beat him at that. <laughs> <laughs> you, take, you, take, you take her back to the hotel room, she strips off to lying on the bed, and you say, I'd like to introduce you to Michael Schumacher, who'll be coming first. <laughs> You drive for it. Is it Huawei? Huawei. Huawei. I bet you wish it was better, Tom, don't you? <laughs> what people don't realise is Michael has paid so much dope, feet have no money left, so he's got to do crash test dummy, he's got to paint the cars, he's got to make the cars. <laughs> you know, they take, he takes half their, their budget, so he's got to do everything. <laughs> so he's valued for money. He is valued for money. Well, okay. don't give them the answer, otherwise you won't be. <laughs> uh, what do you think? I've no idea. I don't know, but he had to queue for eight hours to get on that ride. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the only piece of Grand Prix footage the BBC have left? <laughs> <laughs> Has he got a big knob? <laughs> What's that no thing idea. where they put dummies in fast cars and film them crashing? Oh, it's Grand Prix, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Yeah. You must be confusing me with someone who gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 there's no confusion there. Do you want this handing across? You got any more uh, ideas? Is no, it, had, had, um, actually, Eddie said something interesting there. Had, had it been something that Schumacher had dis um, designed? He had it said there, I can't even speak English. <laughs> <laughs> English <laughs> <laughs> nice. My uncle's a minicab driver in Belfast, actually. He probably works for me. Does he? Yeah. Do you, you have a minicab fit? 
Yeah. You own a minicab firm and you got here on time. That's amazing. <laughs> That's fantastic. I didn't use my own company. All oh, right. <laughs> Bit of advertising there, Eddie, eh? <laughs> Can you read it? What's wrong with that? You got a problem? No, I ain't got a problem. <laughs> So, Eddie, when you're going around the track at whatever speed, 220 miles, do you ever get thrown in and go, yeah, anyone, Safeways, lady with two bags, <laughs> anybody here drop in Kensington? Eddie, can you take care? I don't you have must my... be that close to veering off to an extra five quid. Schumacher, has he designed something like a seat belt or a safety, safety feature, feature which no. he was testing? No. Nope. Can testing we take it, it away from these fools and they're guessing? It's safety belt. It's safety. Yeah, but I want to know why he's doing it. I assume it's the time he, he was a naughty boy at Jerez and he had Villeneuve off. That or he didn't have Villeneuve off, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> tell the truth, tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so he was unfairly blamed for. Mm -hmm. and, tell the truth, man. And, uh, man, you're so bad at lying. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to do seven, eight days off community service. service yeah, I'll, well done. FIA yep, I'll give you a bonus point. Thing, yeah. yeah, the answer is he's promoting the European Road Safety Campaign as part of his punishment for ramming Jacques Villeneuve at the Spanish Grand Prix in 1997. The order of British Formula One drivers has rather switched round in recent years. Eddie here is now at the front with David Coulthard in second and Damon Hill is back in fourth, just behind Kenneth Moore in Genevieve. <laughs> David's team, you may recognise this sport, but what is going on and who's playing? So what was all that about, do we think? Eddie thinks I know these boys. I, I, I recognise them. I yeah. recognise them. One of them looked at my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> if it's the Provos, do they um, use... No, well, the Provos, they're, they're the Peace Boys at the minute. Right. So it's the continuity, the ones in the mass, because they're obviously still wanted. What if it's, do do they go they back to Ireland they... often, Eddie? Uh, not that much, No, I shouldn't bother after this year. <laughs> <laughs> and I certainly won't be using your minicab for... <laughs> I think, does that mean they're wearing Sinn Féin pads? Um, hey! 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 You know, I don't know who it is, but I'd love to buy the Panini album of that lot, wouldn't you? <laughs> Eddie, Eddie wasn't that far off was with, his, a, with his first gas. We were talking about terrorists, were we? Yeah, yeah. They look shifty. Had to be, there's no policemen there. And in the next round, they met a bar at a Meinhof 11 mm -hmm. and lost in a shootout. <laughs> yeah, I'll give, you, I'll give you three points for that, yeah. Is the that team you saw in Balaclavas no. actually was a team of terrorists representing the Mexican guerrilla group, the Zapatista National Liberation Army. The Balaclavas obviously were to hide their faces, although perhaps it would have been more effective if they hadn't had their names printed on the back of their shirts. <laughs> The EZLM now controls parts of Mexico so completely that they can afford to take part in televised football matches. This has led to huge numbers of complaints from parents who are forced to shell out for a different replica balaclava every season. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Gary's team have three points and David's team have seven. It's time now for our photo fit round. Three perfectly ordinary sports stars combined to form a single repellent face. David's team, who did this used to be? <laughs> Is it the FA Auto windscreen trophy? <laughs> 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 you know what, I recognise the hair though. Now that scene in Basic Instinct when she uncrosses her legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. That. I think it looks like Fat Boy Slim. <laughs> He looks like Viali after a piles operation. <laughs> <laughs> you know a lot about the secrets of the stars, don't you, bro? You can't have mess about, mate. <laughs> it looks like you are at the moment. <laughs> I'm the... <laughs> <laughs> I might do my hair like that, you know. You already have, haven't you? She's not too oh, bad. Oh. <laughs> Just a pick of the lights, really. Prince Charles? Yeah, it's Prince Charles. <laughs> What did you spend in the country then? <laughs> the top man, that, that hair we've been so rude about. Who's that? Um, said both of them. Charity. Both of them. He, he, had, he had his hair trimmed in New Zealand one year. That may well be right. You've got too much to get. Through. Wasn't much trimmed as chewed by sheep from the look of it. <laughs> Is that um, Tim Henman in the middle? Quite possibly. And the bottom part is Sharon Davis' suit. Any of your mates wear that sort of thing in the bottom? The old blue? I've never seen that. Cover up. Like that. Okay, let's see who they are. Let's split it up. Kevin Keegan. 
You've got Ian Botham, Tim Henman. Oh, and it was Kevin King, but just too oh, late there. Just go ready on the Egan was oh. easy. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. OK, now, for an extra point, use? David's team, extra point. There what? is a rather tragic connection between Ian Botham, Tim Henman, and Kevin Keegan. And what is it? Um, mm. All play ball sports? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In a sports quiz, that's a fairly uh, safe one. <laughs> <laughs> the link is that they've all appeared in adverts for breakfast cereals, and here they are. Thanks, love. Who can eat more than two? I'm Kevin Keegan. And this is a shredded wheat offer pack with a free play and score game inside. With all week shredded wheat, I eat to win. <laughs> now, unfortunately, Kellogg's Sustain refused us permission to show their rather amusing advert featuring Tim Henman, in case we took the piss out of their product. That's Kellogg's Sustain, the breakfast of quarter finalists. <laughs> Tim Henman says that despite being famous, he's just a normal guy, saying, I still go to the loo a couple of times a day, once for a wee, and once to crap out all that Kellogg sustain. <laughs> <laughs> no bitterness here. <laughs> Kevin Keegan took Fulham up into the first division last week and says he intends to take them all the way to the heights of European competition, which is a great idea because it means Mohamed Al Fayed won't be allowed back in the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary's team, untangle this for us, please. <laughs> it's posh spice. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the love child of Ken Dodd and Fatima Whitbread. <laughs> no, it's, it's, yeah, it's Fatima Dodd. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It, it is actually Moira Stewart first thing in the morning. <laughs> and how, how, how do you know that? Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's Robbie Fowler's nose, isn't it? What uh, the no. uh, yeah. Lennox Lewis in the middle, isn't it? Lennox Lewis, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's this? That's, that's definitely Graham Masso, isn't it? The Graham Masso? Mm -hmm. The way he's puckering up, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the hair. Oh, really? <laughs> so you don't know who it is. Let's split them up and see who they are. Steve Backley. Lennox Lewis and Graham Lasso. Yeah. <laughs> now, once again, there is a link between these three sportsmen. Any idea what it is? It wouldn't be. Well, it wouldn't be the obvious one, would it? Any it might be the obvious one. Insinuations about that, their yeah. sexuality. Yeah, I'll give you an extra point for that. Yes, the link is that all of them have been accused wholly inaccurately of being gay. The only obviously gay sportsman I can think of, if we're to believe photographic evidence, is Villa's Gareth Southgate. <laughs> 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 Do you recognise that, Bradley? Which yeah, one? Yeah. Southgate? <laughs> it's me! But that looks like, just looks like a pig who's weird up on his hind legs. It? <laughs> the gay allegations about Graham Lasso first mistakenly surfaced at the age of 21 when he went on a camping trip with three male friends. A construction worker, a traffic cop and a red Indian. <laughs> Steve Backley has a degree in sports science from Loughborough University. There were two questions in the exam. Are you good at sport? Yes. And are you good at science? No. 50%? That's a pass. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have six points and David's team have nine. It's time now to leave our regulars in the dark as we play Field of Sportsmen. And it's David and Jonathan up first. If you'd like to take your positions, please. You know, ever since I've been introduced this be into the bedroom at home, my life has improved uh, considerably. Has it really? Improved? <laughs> improved. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just the W's then, hey? Are you still use protection? You know, ever since I've been introduced this into my home life, my life has improved considerably. <laughs> what a pro. What a pro. Okay. That's strange, because we'd heard it improved. Yeah. <laughs> you have 90 seconds to work out Mind who you you're feeling up. A lot quicker without. On you go. OK, on, please. It's on. And can we it's have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> OK, you can start feeling now. Not yourself, David, someone else. <laughs> After seven series, I thought it was about the time we did it this one. Well. Rather like it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it George Michael? What have you found, Mr. 
it was. I think, I think it's a vile copy of the Quran. <laughs> Well, hold it, the microphone. <laughs> Phil Collins, easy. <laughs> now. What are you running out? Well, it's the way um, it works, time. What sport are we on? Eh? <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Is it anything to do with Eddie's sport? Maybe. It? What? Is it anything to do with Eddie's sport? Maybe, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, so it's quiet. If it's Damon Hill, the pressure certainly has got to. He's got it. 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 He's the Tom Murray, Murray Walker, or Murray Walker? Murray Walker, yeah! yeah. 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 Gary Murray, you can take your positions, please. I'll put it on afterwards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could do it from there for a change. And can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> okay, and your time starts now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh hang on. Well, I do feel a twat doing this. Survive. I'd imagine. Not <laughs> oh dear, what's this? <laughs> That's taking safe sex a bit far, isn't it? <laughs> Anything else? Is it? <laughs> oh! What's this? Hang on. It's a it's, bike. It is. Uh, it's wet. <laughs> slimy. Wet with a bike. Wet with a bike? Is it cross channel cyclist or something? <laughs> 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 Has Jacques Cousteau got a paper round? <laughs> What's this, Jonathan? Do you know what that is, you big, cuddly bear of a boy? Uh, I've, I've seen experience. your internet site, mate. <laughs> big pop-up bear, there. young Goldilocks. <laughs> no yeah. gender preferences. What, 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 we have to get oh, some names, Hang on, Nick. hang on. Got it. See if we get the sport and... Is it, is it... Oh, Lee Hurst is back. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's a sport. Triathlon. Triathlon. Okay, triathlon. And, what, and but what in the triathlon? What's the, the British champion. The British champion. Uh, more, maybe? English champion. More, maybe? Commonwealth World champion. champion. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's Simon <laughs> that was very good. You said British champion, I said no more than that, and you said English champion. I didn't hear you. Very good work. I can't hear anything with you. <laughs> You've both got three points there, which means that Gary's team have nine points and oh, David's they team has nine. Oh, Nick, you can't give him three points. Oh, I've done it. It's a fellow human being that we consider. OK, let me think. Shut up. Look no. at his face, Nick. his little eyes, he's twinkling, he's crying, he's almost crying. He's going to gush any second. He never wins. If there is one ounce of charity in your dark, black, wiser old soul, <laughs> I beg you, Hancock, to give them just the two. Look, I just look at him. you. I beseech you by all of his I holy... want to. Oh, Christ, I want my I'm Lord, please. I'm sorry. I'm with you, but you look at his hair and you should just be glad he hasn't got mixomatosis. He's happy. <laughs> He's happy! <laughs> well, I tried. Is that? Well, I tried. So, at the end of that round, Gary's team have nine points and David's team have twelve. <laughs> we end, as usual, with the name game. The team in the lead goes first, which at the moment is David's team, amazingly, which means that Jonathan will be doing the clues. Eddie, could you pass those along to Jonathan, please? As right. many names as you can in the next 90 Give seconds. Give us a chance. Just please, Nick, I beg of you, please. <laughs> well, 90 seconds start now. All right, hold it. Oh, what have we got here? Oh, OK, we've got a um, bloke, little Irish, twinkly fella with a tan. He drives very fast car. Me? Not a bad-looking fella. Yeah, what's your name? Eddie. Right, OK. Second name. Irvin. Second one. Irvin. 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 Like Irvin. a big, fat version of you. But he, uh, when he gets in the club, he put a lot of red out. He goes, very boring bloke. He took, he took away all the personality. He made you a special constable. You would be... My name is... Damon Hill? No. The other <laughs> Matty, big blobby blob in a car, beep beep, you know, a driver. <laughs> He's really boring bloke. Mansell, Mansell. Yes! Oh, All right, this bloke is a brother of a bloke you know, and, he, uh, and he's, um, but he's not the same, he's a different man, and uh, his name sounds like he makes shoes. But he's Yes, that's the one. Okay, this bloke, he went other people are shaving inches off their serve, he's shaving his chest, he's boffed book shields, Barbara Streisand, a name but two, probably not at the same time, I don't know. I can see. That's the one. <laughs> oh, this man is no longer with us, he used to drive the fast cars and he had a blonde hair and a dolly bird on each arm. Hunt. Oh Hunt. yeah. This bloke, if he was a beer, you'd cut off his head and you'd put a bit of lime in the top. Very fast from the 80s. <laughs> a beer, not beer. Second name was a soup, a soup brand. Campbell's? Yes, and the first name would be... Donald. Donald. Another name for... <laughs> Another name 
name for sun. Another oh. name for the sun. A Spanish name for the sun. Oh, oh. So, there. Oh. Okay, yeah, I yeah, haven't got the faintest idea who this bloke is. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, no. if your penis was made of mahogany, you would be this name. <laughs> if you had a... Dick. No, oh, another like a little bird. Oh, Woody Woodpecker. Woody Woodpecker. How's it going to be Woody Woodpecker? Oh, look at these like. I'm trying to help you, David. Great guy. Just for one. I could take. Tony, who was it? Tony Woodcock. <laughs> a triumph of enthusiasm over talent. Why I so wanted him to win, I can't tell you. I wanted I mean, to well, give him one thing back. He's got 18, they need 10 to For win. For all You've the physical well. pleasure he's given me, I just wanted That's to give him one thing back. Glory, 10 yes. to win. 10 to win. 90 seconds. Your time starts now. Um, football manager, got a very good team, and England. Uh, sweet, uh, Kevin Kevin. Yeah, all right, very good. Um, a balloonist, and... Uh, Richard Bryson. Very good, indeed. Uh, the uh, Manchester United player scored the most overrated goal in Ryan the history of football. Yeah, very good. <laughs> um, this is a cricket, a 70s cricketer. His first name is like mine, with one of the R's missing, or W's, as Jonathan would say. <laughs> oh, uh, no, no, not that R, the second R. <laughs> Ori. Take the second R out of my name. Roy, Roy correct. Roy. Yeah. And his surname is, is what I was until I went into Jonathan's uh, dressing room earlier. Yeah, a virgin. A girl, pure. Yeah, but thank you, well done. <laughs> um, <laughs> cartoon character Donald Duck. But he's not uh, a cartoon character, he's actually very, very horny and horny. Donald Twat. No, yeah. Randy. 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 Uh, uh, Hasselbank's middle name. Floyd. And this one is Cash something, something smoke, something smoke and a jacket. Smoking, Join. smoking jacket. No, uh, fat. Two syllable word. Um, Rothmans. No, uh, it's, it's a coral, coral, a coral. It's reef, reef. Reef. Reefer. Reefer, yeah, very good. Reefer. Oh, uh, cricketer called Goff. First name. Far. Goff. Richard. <laughs> Goff. Uh, no, 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 no. Darren. Yeah, Darren, Darren. Darren. Something else you smoke. They call it this in the West Cigarette. Indies. No, what you <laughs> smoke, Gary? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, what you smoke in West Indies? Tobacco. No. Ganja. Ganja. You know, you know when you have curried figs. You know when you have <laughs> curried figs. You have curried figs. Yeah. Who makes them? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Big courier, yeah. And Crawford, actress called Crawford, famous. Cindy, 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 Cindy. Cindy. Oh! You want to know, don't oh, you? Nick, tell me it's not well, so the Nick. scores this week are Gary's team have 17 and David's team are the winners with 8. Oh! <laughs> I'm not dying it. Get his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our thanks to David, Jonathan and Eddie, Gary, Rory and Bradley. We're all off to avoid eating a bowl of disgusting Kellogg's Sustain. <laughs> We'll be back at our usual time next week, Thursday at 10 o'clock. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. It's the many pieces of Harry Enfield next on BBC One.